Hey, hey, hey. Good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody? Get this shared to that. Hope you're doing good. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Hey, hey, hey. Tell me hello, say hey, let me know what you're up to. And I'm gonna give people a chance to get on here and then we're just gonna chat. Sometimes people are like, hey, uh, because I do the stuff about health or whatever, then they're also like, let's talk about some makeup or something. I'm not selling any makeup. I'm just gonna show you how quick and easy I do my face. I'm not fluff when it comes to, I like bling as far as jewelry goes. And um, I like having my hair nice and smooth or something, but the face, um, I just wanna get it thrown on there. <laughs> Oh my goodness, Brandy, that is so funny. You were thinking about doing that too. Oh goodness, wow. So let me see if I can situate that a little bit differently. There we go. Anyway, I'm just giving y'all a chance to get on here. Good morning, good morning, good morning. You know, I, that's it, that's it. Throw it on. So I've already scrubbed my face and I really do more of the scrubbing at night, but um, wiped my face clean threw on some moisturizer, and I'm fixing to throw this on. Get you anything. I've got different things. I've had some of these as um, some kind of pour. It's like a primer for your face. So throw on a face primer. I do suggest that. Hey, you guys. We're going to get into the morning word, what uh, love is, right after this. So I know y'all like to kind of see what it is that I do, what it is I'm doing in my daily stuff. We had a wonderful prayer class last night, and um, I don't know if everybody else does this the way I do or not. I don't know. That's what I do. I just throw that on there, work it around that nose ring the best that I can. It's actually um, a piercing, but just kind of, <laughs> bam, that's done. Then I throw on, because I just, you got to have a face primer to help your makeup be smooth. Otherwise, you know, it comes with age. The older you get, you're just going to want that. And this is, you don't have to use these kind of products, whatever you want to use. And I'm not selling any of these things either. Um, you can buy these. Like, I get all this at Ulta Beauty. I love that store. But this is Tarte. I guess that's how you say it. It's a, they call it face tape double duty beauty or something. It's just face tape. And so if you want to use a sponge, you can do that. Um, and if you want to use a brush, you can do that as well. Where is my brush? Here is my brush. Is that my brush? I have several brushes in here, and I have some I like better than others. Let's put it that way. Some of them are soft. I always say use something soft unless you would like to damage your face. <laughs> hey, you guys, we are actually going to get past this makeup here in just a minute. And um, I just kind of do this. And I'm like, yep, that's good. And then if I need some more, I'll throw it on there. And I like this brush thing. I like the sponge, too. I don't wet my sponge. Some people wet the sponge. I don't do that. I like a, uh, I guess you could say a thicker coverage or whatever. So, woo. Also, I don't do eyebrows. I barely ever pluck them. I just, I can't do all that. I'm sorry. It just is not happening. And um, I'm not an anesthetician or whatever, so... I'm probably doing this all the wrong ways, but I've been doing this for at least, I'm trying to think how long I've been doing this, five to seven years I've been wearing makeup. Like I would put it on before then, but it would be like blush, lipstick, that's it. Maybe mascara. And what are we gonna use next? Ah, foundation, so that's like a primer or whatever, that's like Make your dark spots go away. Make them less obvious or noticeable. Right now, I look like a raccoon. But it's fixing to get way better. So this is their foundation by Tarte. And this one does not come... Does this come in a color? Oh, this does come in a color. This is Fair Neutral. That's what I use. Uh, this one comes in a color as well. 
their foundation by that tart or whatever. Um, fair light beige. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I'm looking at my eye over here, and I don't know if it's the lighting or if it really does look like that. <laughs> but I see a dark spot. I don't like the dark spot. And you can with this, you just add more. You see a dark spot, add more. You can't go wrong with that. <laughs> you probably can. I'm just uh, just saying, I am not a makeup person. But sometimes y'all have been like, I wanna see you, but do your makeup. So today you get to see me do my makeup. I'm like, oh God, help me. Makeupless in front of hundreds of people, thousands of people. Um, where is my other spongy? So these are shaped different. When I use the sponge for the eyes to blot all this on, I use this one. I can, it's smaller. I can get all up in here around the eye really good. And if I got to reach somewhere deeper, it's got that. And then there's this one. It's kind of bigger. I like to use that one over my whole entire face. But today I'm not using the spongy thing. I am using this brush thing. So, and it is quality brush does make a difference. These are actually from um, that store in the mall. I got these like, oh my gosh, I probably got these in like 2008, 2007, I don't know, in the mall, that minerals powders store. Some of y'all probably know the name of it. I don't even remember the name of it. Um, but the brush gets around. The reason I've been using the brush lately experimenting is because this nose, the nose piercing that you can see here, it's hard to get stuff around that because you don't want like a blank spot right there. Then you look retarded. Kids just say whatever, don't they? Oh my gosh. <laughs> the kids asked you this morning, why are your eyes so dark underneath them? Oh, <laughs> It's y'all. Y'all did this to me. And so I just kind of, I just kind of throw that on there. Kind of rub and smear it in and just go like this and whoa. So that's done. And okay, so. And the sponge, I think personally, the sponge uses more of the makeup. I'm just going to be honest. But it just gets all around my piercing right there. And so then I just take and I kind of wipe the diamond off. Now, with the brush, you kind of have to blot like this. Because if you streak, you're going to see those streak lines. At least was on my face, you do. If it doesn't do that for you, praise the Lord. That is so wonderful. But I kind of do some of both. I'm not a makeup expert. If I didn't have to put anything on, I wouldn't put anything on. I didn't have to put stuff on until, like I said, I got, you know, 40. Before then, I just kind of did blush or something just to highlight to make me look, I don't know, more pretty. Um, mascara and something like that. And I think that's enough of that stuff. I don't know if you can tell much of a difference. I think I look a little less. I don't know, something or other. And then pick you a blush. I mean, this is how basic this is here. Oh, that's a bronzer. I'm going to throw that on there. I really don't even know how to use the bronzers properly. This is just a Pinky Peach, throw that on there. Throw that on there. And I may even go back over that again because I'm gonna take this brush, it's different. This one's smaller for the blush. Oh, look at my brushes, they really need washed. And this is for the powder. And I use this stuff, I love this Tarte, this whatever, T-A-R-T-E, Shape Tape Setting Powder. So the Shape Tape is what I put on my eyes. Um, and so I just dip it down in there. I like this one. I just really like it. And you just sort of, um, I, you can do certain types of things. I'll show you here in just a minute, but I don't do that. Some people, they, um, pack the powder on 
under their eyes. Well, I've noticed if I do that with this thing, and you get tons of powder on that, and then you begin blotting all that powder there, so they put their eyeshadow on, and then they dust it off, and so the dust of the eyeshadow, if the wrong color dusted on their cheek, it dusts it away. I understand that concept. If you have dry skin, that is probably a wrong thing to do. You're going to look like all your wrinkles are showing up. You're going to look like some marbled, cracked pot. <laughs> so, I don't suggest you do that. That's my opinion. That's the uh, experience that I've had with that, so... There we go. Just makes you kind of just look so nice. And you can understand how serious I take makeup. It is serious when you need it. But at the same time, I'm like, uh, mm. no. And this is a Lash Grow Vitamins. You're supposed to put this on once a day. The tube is supposed to last 30 days. I've had this for, I don't know, three months. Because I forget to put it on. I did notice a difference. This is a rapid lash. A lash serum. But I don't use this every day. And I'm going to tell you why. When I first got it, I started using it every day. And I got a twitch in one of my eyes. And Holy Spirit said it's related to this. I said, excuse me, what? So I stopped using it. The twitch went away. I used it. I started back every day. And the twitch came back. Why would this cause eye twitching? I don't know. But when I use this like two or three times a week, I don't have twitching in the eye. But when I was using this one time a day, I'm telling you, whatever this is, uh, you know, it could have been an allergy. I don't know what it is. I just know I can use it. I just can't use it, but two or three times a week. Now, I doubt I will buy it again, not because it's not a good product. It is. It is a good product. But I found a mascara, which is in my purse, which is not in here, which means I have to get up and go find it. But the mascara uh, came with vitamins. It's Big Bang Lash. It's, uh, I think it's called Big Bang Lash. I love that thing. Um, but it's in my purse because I had my hair done yesterday. And so, but before I put my lipstick on, you can put your lipstick on first and then put on that lip inflation. It's like 5 or $7.00 at Ulta, and it too is not in here. It's in my purse. So, what do you do when your products that you normally use are in your purse? Well, I could get up and go get it, but it's not that big a deal, even though I love those ones best. I can just use something else. I have this. It's not lip inflation, but it says lip mentha lip tint. Bigelow. It's by Bigelow, and I get all these samples. People, everywhere I go, they just give me stuff. So, it's nice. It's shiny. Get any excess. The foundation. It gets around your lips. Get that off of there. My other one doesn't do that as far as caking the foundation. If it gets on your lips, it just smooths right over. Because that's its job. This is just an inexpensive lip balm. But it does the trick. Because it makes it easier for me to put my lipstick on. Well, that's when you start to cring and declaring over yourself. People give me things all the time. Good things. Wonderful things. Beautiful things. Things they don't want back. Things they're not going to miss. Things they love and they cheerfully give. And they just enjoy blessing me. That's what you needed to cring and declare over yourself. And I'm sorry, I'm not froofy as far as makeup goes. I'm not going to spend 50 billion hours trying to line my lips. Um, I love that lip inflation from Ulta because it's clear, it's cheap, it does a really cool job. And I still think I need more. Maybe it's just me. I feel like I need more blush. <laughs> and like I said, my mascara is in my purse. And I'm not walking in there to get it. So, since I used this, then I'm going to just use some kind of basic mascara. And that's okay. So, what would I like to use? I've got all these samples. Um, 
like I get these samples you might think well that's a full size it is but it came like you spend $35 or something I think I got this last year I mean I've had this for over a year and people may be freaking out going oh you're supposed to replace those every month or every three months well I don't have eye disease I don't have any kind of issues I don't do anything crazy with it and I've probably worn this three times so it's still something in there I use that if you're worried about some kind of eye issues then um, there is something that you can do as far as um, I think it's like putting a bit of essential oil lavender but I'd be careful doing that because you're gonna be doing that near your eye and that could cause harm if you don't know what you're doing you could probably google that I have heard that that would work um, and then always if you're just unsure or if you notice you're getting red eyes or something strange start in the trash Throw it in the trash. And I think I'm just going to use this little skinny sample here. This is by Lancome. Um, I don't use their mascara all the time. I'm just going to tell you. It can be a two-step mascara. I don't do two-step mascara because it's two steps. I don't have time for all that. I'm sorry. It ain't happening. It is not happening. <laughs> That's my opinion. Uh, but with this, I love it because if it gets on your skin, you can just let it dry and then go back and go, and it comes right off. But... The downside to this one is um, it makes, for me, if you are a very young person or if you're under 40, under 35, you're not going to have that issue, but the older a person gets, you know, uh, for instance, I just know that you can break your eyes, lashes off if they get hard and brittle, and this makes them hard, okay? So, this is a must if you're going to wear this brand. I'm just going to tell you here. We might even put a little extra on. The other brand I have, your eyelashes get firm, but they don't get hard. Yet, it doesn't smear on you. It's waterproof. They're called the Big Bang. And it's got like four or five different types of vitamins in it. It keeps your eyelashes soft. So, it's almost like this and this in one. So, you don't have to have two products. Yay, because um, I went to the girls in Ulta, and I said, help me with my eyes, because my eyelashes are doing X, Y, Z, and they said, this will fix it. I said, all right, thank you. And now that they've all grown out and everything, I literally um, don't have to worry about certain things. Now, I'm going to do something before I do the mascara. I don't have to worry about them breaking off and doing that craziness again. I'm going to put this on. This is... No matter what kind of brand of makeup you use, you can use this. It is a face setting spray. This one is not that expensive. This is by Urban Decay. I like a product that works that's cheap. Come on. I want it to work like an expensive product and be cheap. <laughs> I'm just saying. So this face spray, I've got the base of everything I want on my makeup. Now, I could be putting, I could throw eyeshadow on. Y'all, you know I love silver. Okay. This was from Ulta, and it's Revolution. And I broke the case in traveling. I guess in my suitcase being flung around on airplanes and who knows what. So the lid, I have it on with a hairband. It stays on with a hairband. But I love it, this silver eyeshadow. And I just put it all over the bottom. Well, I guess I could do that now before. But you want to do that before you put this on. So we'll do that now. Again, I have tried experimenting with eyeshadow. And um, I'm just not the person to do that. That's just... I need, an, I need an expert guide. You can use a brush to put it on. Or you can use this. These little pads here are going to be more controlled. Okay? It's going to be more controlled. And so I just kind of dab, 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 dab. And then let's just throw some on there. I love this silver stuff. I just do. Sometimes um, I go places, I do things, and people will be like, the reason you've got gold flakes is because of your eyeshadow. No. Or the reason you have silver flakes is because of your eyeshadow. No. Like that other day at the gym, I didn't even have eyeshadow. I didn't even put eyeshadow on that day. So it had nothing at all. This is probably violating every single eyeshadow rule that is out there in makeup land. But I don't care because I like mine like this. It looks cool. And you see how much shadow and darkness and issues that are with the eyes. You might think, my gosh, fix that. Nope. People think I have shadowed. People think I have blended. People think I've done all kinds of things. People will always go, oh my gosh, what shadow? What this? What, what color is that for your eyes? And I'm like, 
nothing silver it is base whatever you throw on your eyes so they don't look black so there you go that's easy that's also inexpensive and we're going to face spray this now so there you go and i use a lot it stays on all day long if i forget my makeup is off in 45 minutes i'm not joking my makeup is within 45 minutes to three hours it is completely gone unless i use this and then i'm talking 10 12 hours later i still look like i just walked away from the makeup counter in my house <laughs> so when i find something that's cheap and works it works so this is called urban decay all-nighter makeup setting spray long lasting it is long lasting very long lasting um well, let's do the mascara, and then we're going to get in there and be talking again about what love is. We're going to be talking about that. Some of you might think, I can't believe you're doing makeup. What's that got to do with Jesus? What's that got to do with anything? You know what? We all live in a real world. We all have real things that we have to get done and do. That's just what it is. And Jesus loves me. He wants me to look beautiful. And now, if I look pretty, and it draws people to me, and then I tell them about him, how is that wrong? It's not. Some of you, come on, you are what? You are the daughter of the king. You are the bride of Jesus. And you are walking around looking like death warmed over. And you wonder why people might not want to be so friendly towards you. Not that we should be caught up in appearances by any means, but if you can do something to look a little better, what harm is there in that? There's not. So, that gave me a lot of lashes, and this is just ordinary mascara. And one thing I like about that other product, I still have that mascara on from the one with the vitamins in it that I wore yesterday. It's still all over my eyelashes as well. You might think, do you not rub that off, take that off? Well, why would I want my eyelashes to fall out? If you use an eyelash that's going to make them hard, mascara that makes them hard or something, you're going to want to get that off of there. But I'm telling you, the more you, it'd be like with hair. The more you scrub that stuff, the more you invigorate it, it with eyelashes anyway, it causes them to, you know, if you're rough with them like that and throw all that stuff on there, you're liable to cause them to fall out. Usually that's what the issue is with people is getting them to stay in there long enough to be long Because after a certain time they fall out Which is normal. You just don't want them falling out before the normal time You want them to be Keeping them supple Now I have friends some of them use castor oil on their eyelashes. It may work. I don't use castor oil for anything at my age, it really wouldn't matter probably, but you don't want castor oil on any young girls um, because that stuff can cause you all kinds of female problems. In South America, they use that for sterilization of people. So, I'd be very careful with that. Oh, Vicki, that's wonderful. Y'all already getting scripture going. Brandy's got Luke 9.29 up here. Vicky has Psalms 30, excuse me, 33, 20 through 22. And you know what? I'm done. I've done it. I'm done. Um, here are some tips as far as wrinkles go. Doing this number, you kind of use these three fingers and you do this number. This tapping technique. Now, if I try to raise my eyebrows after doing that they don't want to go up if you do that one to three times a day it literally keeps you from it causes the uh, probably some kind of swelling under the skin honestly but it keeps the muscles from being able to doesn't want to do anything now and so smiling the same thing what can you do here Again, those same three fingers. Probably should have done this before putting the makeup on. I may have fingerprints all over my face. But anyway, there you go. That's what I do. And then 
I like this thing right here, but you could use any brand. This is Lancome, but you can use any brand of concealer, which is different than the eye thing. The reason, here's the difference in these two products. This one is very, 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 very drying. It'll make you look like you have cracked skin. This one is very, very, very moist. So, yet it dries and stays in place. Uh, but this one is also more white. I could probably get a different color in it, but. And I just put some of this on my finger. Just the least little bit. And then I've had a breakout. After moving, friends have said it was probably stress or whatever. And you just put it anywhere you think you have a blemish. Covers it up. It's gone. Flawless looking skin. Now, normally, this would have taken me one-tenth of the time because I did all this talking and stuff. I normally, I mean, I just, whew, let's go. That's what I do. Um, even if I'm going to speak. Well, I can say anytime I speak on television... I try to go and check out the lighting or something, get there early. Um, because some of the stations have gone to different lights now to where I don't have to put on tons of makeup. And if you do, you're going to look like a street walker. And then I've been in certain stations, television stations, that if you put on heavy makeup to where you look like a street walker, walk away from the counter, go out there and sit on the couch, and you look like you have no makeup on. So it depends on their lighting. So... So we're going to go now and maybe do a little praise and worship. We're going to be talking about what love is. And you know what? Caring for yourself, grooming yourself is something that should be done. I'm getting these things turned off here. Um, you got to groom yourself and take care of yourself because the Lord loves you. You're very important to him and he cares about you. So it's not wrong to look your best. Now, if I was in there spending hours away from my family, looking like a crazy person, refusing to spend time with people, all caught up into makeup, spending all my money on makeup, spending all my time, my money, my energy, and my effort in the way that I look, that would be an issue, right? Y'all, I have not had my coffee. What are y'all drinking this morning? Aw, Adrian, that's so sweet. Tiffany is demonstrating how to be feminine in the Holy Spirit. She's doing an awesome job. Oh, Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, my kitchen is a wreck right now. If anybody wants to come over and clean my kitchen, you feel free to do so. Otherwise, I'll have to get involved in the kitchen and do it myself. <laughs> I went to, have y'all ever gone? I love a deal. Y'all know that. I love saving money. I feel like I'm doing something over the top when I get something for almost nothing. I'm just telling you, I, I love a deal. It wouldn't matter if I had millions. I still love doing that. Does that make sense? So... I'm seeing this, uh, I went in Ross, that uh, Dress for Less, Ross Dress for Less. I got me two pairs of tennis shoes uh, for the gym. The last time I bought tennis shoes was probably a couple of years ago, and the memory foam in my shoes had worn slap out, and I was hurting in my hips and my knees, and Holy Spirit was like, well, your shoes have worn out, and I'm like, well, then you're going to have to give me money for shoes, so I get money for shoes, and I go to get these, so I got like two pairs of shoes for the cost of one pair. Probably less than one pair of shoes. Uh, I love doing that. So, I get those, and as I'm checking out, I look over, and y'all know I love flavored coffees. But you realize how expensive those things are? We're talking, they are some expensive. Well, I literally, they had stuff for 2 and $3. Um, some of them, I think, were 4 bucks. One of them might have been seven ninety nine, but it was like the big mega pack of those K-Pods that we're talking would have been you know, double that, if not more. So I got honey bun, donut shop, honey bun, coffee. I've tried that one. It was so good. I've tried this next one too. I got caramel vanilla cream. Oh my gosh. I love flavored coffees. Caramel vanilla cream by Green Mountain. Oh my goodness. So, but my favorite one is probably the honey bun one. I'm just going to be honest. It's probably this honey bun one. And then I was, when I was there, they had turmeric teas and I had been asking the Lord to uh, help with, you know, suppressing the appetite and all that kind of stuff. You know, normally I don't have that issue. I moved to Louisiana and I don't know, I just want to eat everything in sight. And I'm like, oh God, help me. And so I found they had stress balance tea for $2 and something, super slim tea for $2 and something. They had uh, herbal uh, green tea with different types of herbs in it that suppress your appetite teas. Uh, and I, I was like, wow, well, thank you, Lord. So I threw them in there. 
So I've been, I can tell a difference. I've only been, I guess, taking some of these things for um, peace, um, being slim, more energy, turmeric, herbal tea, and whatever this other stuff is to help you be more energetic as well. And it, I can tell a difference. Like yesterday, I wasn't thinking. I was still in the house like normal. Hey, Sharon. And I was not running around going, my gosh, what can I eat? My gosh, what can I put in my mouth? Oh, what can I do? What can I do? And we all know I didn't stay home all of yesterday because I had things I had to get done. Um, because I got locked in my car. I got back here at the house. And I was going to run inside, finish the workbook, and upload it. And I'm in the car, stuck in there. It didn't want to let me out. <laughs> Is that not crazy? But I did end up getting out of the car. And it was a nice day. It wasn't hot. It wasn't cold. And I didn't panic. I had thought about panicking. And I said, well, I'm not going to panic. Um, obviously, the Lord didn't not, you know, he knew that today the car would lock me in. <laughs> you know? Oh, I love and miss you too, Sharon. Oh, my gosh. I, that offer is still available for you and your husband should y'all ever want to come here <laughs> and vacation, get away from the kids and the grandbabies. So, let me grab some kind of creamer. What do I want? What would be good in honey bun? Do I want... Maybe I just want milk in it. I think I just want milk today. Sometimes I use creamer. I think the Irish cream would probably be good in that one as well. But today... Hey, Libby. I'm going to use milk. And y'all know me. I do organic. I love organic products. So. I run my K-Pods through twice. Uh, for those of you who love strong coffee, you would not want to do that. Whoops. Right there. There we go. You wouldn't want to do that at all. I'm sort of just shooting the breeze and spending time with you. So for those who just wanted to go jump right into the Bible study, I'm sorry. We do have mornings where we do that. Most mornings we do. But today I was just doing some natural things and wanted to include you in it. And y'all know I love this multi-collagen product. Okay. They have one that says it's the exact same. I got this one that's normally $57. That includes taxes and whatnot. Um, I got it for $34 and change. I got on Amazon and one of the sellers uh, that had this, there was a $5 coupon. And plus it was on, let me set y'all down because I'm trying my best to get the lid off this thing and put it in my coffee. And I put this in my coffee. I was like, why is my coffee cup? I understand what I've done. I picked one of the smaller coffee cups. I'm going to transfer this real quick into a bigger cup because I'm like, why will my stuff not fit in there? My stuff always fits in there, but that would be why. I picked the wrong size coffee cup. God is so good, you guys. But I take one whole heaping scoop of this. Sometimes I do a little more. I can tell a difference in my skin. Um, I probably, my skin has reversed at least five years. No joke. I will tell you one of the things that happened is, um, because this collagen works in your body from the inside out, I gained weight. But I'm still, all my clothes and everything, I'll still fit the same. Does that make sense? So collagen is evidently all throughout the body. So not only did I notice my face firmer and more filled in, from this, okay, way less wrinkles and stuff like that, more firm skin, looking way younger, but the scale went up a little bit, but the clothes fit. Does that make sense? So let's put this away. Um, I'm going to stir this up, and then we're going to go talk about what love is. Okay. Because what I want you to understand is that God loves you so much. He's got so much out there for you. He's got so much where you are for you. I just thank the Lord for flavored coffees. I thank Him for this milk. I thank Him for you guys. I thank Him for His own self. I thank Him for this house, this ministry. Come on, let's just take the napkin with me since it doesn't want to sit down and be normal. 
<laughs> so I normally like to go on the prayer porch and talk with y'all, but I have everything set up here. It's an absolute disaster from last night. So where am I going to set my coffee? Okay, y'all, I got my verses in the way. I got everything in the way. I guess I get to set it on top of my planner. I get to set that down. Yay! And I love this backdrop here. Um, you probably can't see it because it's backwards, but it says forgive and forget. Forgive and forget. That can be hard to do. Let me move this pillow out of the way. That can be hard to do sometimes. But you know what? The Lord forgave us and we have to forgive other people if we want him to forgive us. It's not that he can't forgive us. It's that if we're holding unforgiveness in certain areas of our life, then it's going to affect our physical health. It's going to affect us spiritually. This is some good coffee. It's very similar to having a honey bun. There are certain things in life I don't get to enjoy anymore. Honey buns are one of them. I can't remember the last time I had a honey bun. It's been five or ten years ago. Thank you, Lori. This turquoise was actually a gift from y'all. Definitely. Um, <clears throat> let me see. I'm going to put on a little bit of music softly. We had that prayer class yesterday. Um, we were on there for over three hours. Nobody has to be on there that long. But those who enjoyed being on there that long, those that had questions, I just stayed on there. I just stayed on there. It made them feel good. Made me feel good. Okay, let's see. This is by Emmy Rose. Promises never fail. Bethel Music. God is so good. Whew, he's so good. Jesus, we just thank you right now. I thank you that you show us how much you love us. This song talks about how he's for us. He's so for you. He's not against you. He's for you. Mm, thank you, God. Darkness and shadows have no power over me. Shame has no authority. Oh, he won't let go. He won't let go of me. I know your thoughts, your plans for me are good. Promises of God never fail. He's speaking favor over you. He's dancing over you. He's singing over you. Zephaniah 3.17 Who will rejoice over you with joyful songs. He's doing it right now. Uh-oh. Did someone say something inappropriate? from the broadcast. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, we don't need distractions. But the Lord is. He's dancing over. You're going to see the promise come to pass. You're going to see that promise come true in your life. 
asking if I'm single. The Lord is so good. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. Woo! Nothing like worship. Worship gets me spinning. I'm telling you. It gets me just zinging in the Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Do you believe the promise that he spoke over you? You're going to have to push through in that. Nobody else is going to do it for you. Other ones, we can come along. We can encourage you. But I can't do it for you. I, I'm not in your home. I'm not in your house. I can't stand there doing that for you. Come on. If you're one of my mentees, don't forget, today is the day to call me. And let's get a schedule set up for the times um, that's good for you, good for me, to where we can talk each week. And get that rolling. you got to have those, uh, again, at least five things that are very important to you in your life that we can work on together. Okay? My life may not be perfect, but I do have some things going on. You know, that seem to be lining up nice. Do you see what I'm saying? Thank you, Jesus. So. His promises never fail. Oh, my goodness. Do y'all feel that? I can feel uh, the vibrating, the power, the um, sound of the Lord. This is so good. God in heaven is so good. He's so good. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. We honor you. We welcome you here on the live stream. hear that she says we hold on to your word oh share the verse brandy share it it's for everybody you haven't forgotten. thank you jesus thank you jesus oh he hasn't forgotten no he didn't forget the promise come on he did not forget the promise alexa turn on living room okay Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. You hold us in attention and belief. You hold us when we can't see. Thank you, Jesus. You hold us in the and belief. Oh, good. Joshua 21, 43 through 45, promise keeper. Tell us if they're filled no part of any good thing which the Lord has promised to the house of Israel. All will come to pass. I declare that you shall experience God's glory before the end of this year in Jesus' name. Amen. That is such a good, that must be a devotional. That's wonderful. It is Bethel, a particular woman. Emmy Rose. Emmy Rose. Promises never fail. Can you use the promise of God as a weapon? That's what she's singing about. Using the promise as a weapon. Because it, it comes down to you believe God's telling the truth or you believe he's a liar. You know? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
His promises never fail. Never, never, ever. Amen. Amen, Adrian. We plead the blood over all of our families and household members. Our material items, pets, homes, vehicles. Amen, amen. Hey, Carl. Who else is on here? Prophetess Lisa. I know, Alexa, she talks back. What's well, really bad, she's not like kids. Like, if you tell the children, go close the door, and the door is already shut, they'll go, it is shut. Okay, she doesn't do anything. She just says, okay. So if the lights are already on and I say, turn the lights on, Alexa, she just says, okay. So the lights are already on. Alexa, turn the living room on. Okay. She just says, okay. She's so agreeable. She doesn't say, the lights are already on. She doesn't back talk me. You keep having the soldier of Christ in your mind right now, Vicky. Cool. No, Sherry, I hadn't heard that prophecy from those people. I don't know who they are. Hey, Lavette. Hey, Peter. Hey, Cheryl. Your promises never fail. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm going to turn this down now, and we're going to talk about some more scriptures about love. Oh, gosh, I just don't want to stop worshiping you guys. I don't want to stop it. I'll try not to listen to it. But I can tell Alexa to play things. Um, because of Black Friday... Okay, my house is so huge. Alexa works in the living room, and it's central for every room except for my bedroom. Alexa can't hear me in my bedroom. It wouldn't matter if I scream at the top of my lungs. She can't hear me. And so I went online on Black Friday. It was really more like I was just, I just started to surf. Um, I was just lif listening to the Lord. You know somebody who argues with the GPS. Stop telling on me. Anyway, <laughs> And uh, I just was scrolling around, and I found one for like, I don't know, 21 or $22, just like the one I have here. And I said, oh, yes, thank you, Lord. Um, somebody keeps calling me. Please stop calling me while I'm doing live streams. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We honor you. We worship you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. And uh, love is also patience. We've learned about um, and talked about one of the main verses that there is in that 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter, that tells us what love is, what love is not. So I, I, I got one for the bedroom. I got one of those Alexas for the bedroom. The kids are loving it. Oh, don't you just love it? It could spell all kinds of stuff. That is so cool. You hear it spelling stuff all day long. Oh, my gosh. That's when it's like, do y'all know what a dictionary is? Here's a book. <laughs> you know, electronics and all that is really, really, really good um, for me because I, I just always, I made them learn how to do it the old school way first before before they could do the other one. William, coffee is good this morning. So I've got my Bible right here, and I want us to look up 1 Corinthians chapter 13 again very quickly. We've done a Song of Solomon series before in the past. Um, if you really want to know how much he loves you, that Song of Solomon, you've got to picture yourself as the Shulamite and him as... King Solomon in that. <laughs> Arguing with GPS. Oh, is uh, Apostle Rusty on here? Blessings, blessings. Oh, he is. Hey there. Blessings to you. Hey, Jenny. Oh, they're part of Jesus culture. Jonathan and Katie, Jenny. Okay. Wow. 
But then I, after they, yeah, Brandy, like you said, old school mama, once they learn how to do that the old fashioned way, I let them do the new technology. Um, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it's that love chapter, verses 4 through 8 just begin to really talk to us about what love is and what love is not. As a quick reminder, love is suffers long. That means it's patient. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love, it does not envy. It's not jealous. It does not parade itself. It's not prideful. It is not puffed up. It's, it doesn't go around boasting. It, it, we are to boast in the Lord. It does not behave rudely. If you're rude, you need to repent. You can't say that's just my personality. You do have a personality, but if it operates outside of the love of God, you're in error. You're wrong, and you need God to change your personality. How's that? So don't use that. Well, I, she's just a redhead. She just flies off the handle. No, that's a lie. You might be have a propensity to fly off the handle, but you better submit that thing to the Lord. Been there, done that. Come on. Excuse me. Come on. Mm -mm -mm -mm. We can't leave it up to, oh, I was just born that way. You might have been born that way. Submit it to the Lord. Ask him to fix it. So it's also, like I said, it's not rude. It doesn't behave rudely. It does not seek its own. It doesn't mean you can't seek your own and what's good for you. I bought me some herbal teas. They were on clearance. Super cheap. So I can do the things that would benefit me, but it would be wrong of me to ignore the needs of other people. That would be bad. Thank you, Prophetess Lisa. I received that refreshing and new oil poured over me. Amen. As you, as I read that, I was like, I began to see that oil. I can see it right now just pouring out. Oh, my goodness. It's from a jar that never stops pouring. I'm just telling you. Uh, and so, it does not seek its own, like I said. Is not provoked. Are you easily provoked? It's not easily provoked. You don't fly into a rage and wrath all the time. Thinks no evil. Does not rejoice in wrong or iniquity or sin, but rejoices in the truth instead. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Now, when we look at all that about believes all things, it doesn't mean that you believe a lie. It means that, hey, Wanda, it means you are always going to believe the best in somebody until something happens that would, like, contradict that. When my kids wake up, now, this is when they were little. They're grown. But when my kids were little, um, I couldn't hold against my child the fact that he spilt his cup at the table yesterday and today treat him like he's a cup spiller. He'd always be a cup spiller. He'd never be able to get beyond spilling his cup. Okay? And so, hey, Apostle Lawrence. Blessings. Apostle Lawrence Rothschild is on here. Y'all should follow his ministry. He's in England. He's awesome. He and his wife, they're beautiful. Um, so you can't hold. Essentially what that is, is you recognize the truth. But I can't. Here's an adult situation. Someone is angry. They fly off the handle a lot. We're going to assume this person does not physically abuse or verbally abuse people. But they get angry. They act crazy or whatever. And you recognize they have that issue. You're not denying they have that issue. But the next time you're around them, you're going to treat them like they're not going to do that. You're giving them the opportunity to get beyond that. You're not going to be known as the outburst. Or, you know, like I said with the little kid, the cup spiller. Or, um, you know, it's really bad when parents say, my child always does that. You can't ever get anything right. You're always breaking things. Well, you know what? You can't wake up the next day and expect your child to get beyond that and keep calling them the, the uh, item breaker, the child who breaks everything. That's not their name. That's not their identity. And so love recognizes the truth but operates with an attitude of, I'm giving that person the opportunity to get beyond this. Amen. Speaking life, etc. So, love never fails. Love never fails. We're going to jump down to, let's see, verse 13. It says, and now abide faith, hope, love, these three, but the greatest of these is love. 
Well, what is hope? Let's look at these words, faith. Faith is an action word, meaning I heard the promise. I'm acting on it. I'm sowing toward the promise. My physical actions, my mental thoughts, everything, not just my mental thoughts, but my physical actions are in faith of what God said. God could have told me to move to Shreveport, Louisiana, and I sat on the couch going, I wonder when, I wonder how. Hmm. And just walked on thinking somebody was going to walk up to the door, knock on the front door, and buy the house. No, I went through some steps. I put it into action. I called a realtor. I went searching for the realtor. Not just any realtor. Who do you want me to sign with, Lord? Etc., etc. So, faith is an action word. Now, what is hope? Hope protects you. Hope keeps you from follow, falling off into depression. If, we put, if I put my hope in the Lord, I'm never going to be disappointed. You might think, but I have hoped in the Lord before, and I got disappointed. But unless you choose to stay that way, it's not going to happen. Disappointment doesn't stick around. You have to push through that. You have to tell yourself... You really, it's like you're proclaiming it to the devil, but it's really you that you're encouraging. The enemy already knows that. You're encouraging yourself to have hope in the Lord. If I keep hoping in the Lord, because you owe God, and you just remind him, you said this was the promise, and I've done my part. I'm continuing to do my part. Now, I know that you're here to protect me, to take me to that promise. I'm trusting in you. You said those who hope in the Lord, those who trust in the Lord will never be put to shame. Never. So my circumstances are looking different than that, but I choose to believe you, so I know it's going to line up. You have to keep doing that until it lines up. My life, many of you have known me for decades. You know. You know the things I walked through and went through, or you've seen it or you've heard about it. I could have, when my son died and the divorce happened, sat down and killed myself or just sat in a, a, a what a mess on the floor or decided to check myself into the psych ward. I sure had a whole lot of uh, reasons to do that. You know, if anybody ever had a reason to go do such a thing, it would have been me. But I didn't do that. I chose not to do that. I can remember, well, I, I say I chose not to do that. You know, after my son died, the doctor came into the room and I said, I want something. Give me something to take. He said, excuse me. I said, no, I, I need something, some kind of psychotropic drugs. Just give me something. I had a child to die. What are you prescribing for me? He said, do you, you ever heard of the uh, Mennonites? And I'm like, I've just told the doctor, and he already knows my, my kid died. Uh, I need something because I'm not okay, and I knew I wasn't okay. And he's talking about the Mennonites. And I'm like, excuse me? Okay, I knew people who, this one person I had counseled, a, a canned good fell out on their toe, and they went to the doctor, and they got psychotropic drugs because... This canned good item fell on their toe, and it upset them. And I'm thinking, I've had a kid to die? I have gone through life, horrible things, hell and high water, and never been on psychotropic drugs. I'm asking you for them, and I've got a real reason. My kid is dead, and you won't give me drugs? <laughs> so I wasn't happy with the doctor, and he's talking about these Mennonites. I said, yeah, what about them? He says, you know, they're like the Amish. I said, and? He said, well, they just had their relatives come for the one night. They kind of sit with them, read to them. They're with them. Then they put the Bible beside their bed or on their nightstand. And then they walk away and say, oh, we'll be back next week or next month or whatever. We'll check out in on you like in a, a week or two. Why? Because they expect that person to draw into the Lord to be healed from that in that manner. They don't run off to the psych ward. And I'm like... And I was like, I knew. I was like, Lord, you, you, you won't even let me get a med. You know, I was so upset with the Lord through all that. But I came through that. I didn't sit down in a pile in a wad somewhere. I continued to stand. And God has worked my life back out again. It took some time. Okay? It took some time. People who knew me then are just like, I don't know how you were able to get up each day and put a smile on your face. And some people, I even had some people, especially, uh, you know, people who'd never been through that. They, those were the ones who said that. They were like, wipe that smile off your face. What's wrong with you? Uh, who smiles in circumstances like this? You look mentally deranged smiling when something bad has gone on. That doesn't even fit. 
Well, I had to ignore them because they didn't know any better. That smile was not only keeping me sane, but it was, I was sowing seed in a really bad time. I was sowing seed for my future harvest. Okay? I take authority over whatever that is right now. Whoever's praying and saying that, we just, I command those words to fall to the ground. In Jesus' name. I'm not going to put up with that. Okay. Alrighty. So, we're in verse 13, it says, it's, we're talking about that faith, that's action. Hope, that is your belief system. Love, that is God himself. But the greatest of these is love. Love. The greatest of these is love, that's God. Amen, Lisa. That's true. God said, depend on him. And so, that's what I did. But he is the love and love infusing in us and flowing out of us. So that's something we have to remember when we want to be, you know, I have to tell myself that several times a day. Be patient. Be patient. They don't know what I know. They don't know what you know, etc., etc., etc. 1 John 3, 1. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God, and that is what we are. I command angels to get between me and any warfare right now in Jesus' name. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. This right here is talking about, see what great love the Father has lavished on us. 1 John 3 and 1. He's lavished us. Lavished. Uh, when you lavish, that means you pour it out. Just like Prophetess Lisa earlier said, she saw oil pouring on me. Thank you, Teresa. And it's unending. It's never stopping. Um, to lavish means to give without reserve, to just pour it out, just huge amounts of it, just foom, foom, foom. Wow. That's true, Lori. Lori said you never know what pain behind a person's smile. She lost her daughter and husband within a year and a half. And the Lord saved her and gave her strength. Wow, praise God, Lori, wow. And, you know, we don't ever know. Unless God tells us or the person tells us, we don't know the things that is behind that smile. That smile is what helped to save me. Oh, thank you, Lisa. I appreciate that. So, again, that word lavish means over the top. Sometimes people say, God will give you your needs, but he's... He's not going to give you beyond your needs. That is so not true. When the ways of a man please the Lord, not only does he make his, you know, your enemies be at peace with you, but when your ways please the Lord, he gives you the desires of your heart. Let's see if I can find that verse. And what do you desire for your heart? Delight yourself in the Lord. This is Psalm which one is this? Psalm 37 and 4. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. He will give us the desires of our heart. <sighs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. He's faithful. He's faithful. But here's the thing. Here's the key right here. What are you desiring? Is it contrary to your purpose? Is it contrary to God's heart? Is it contrary to the word of God? If it is, you can't have that. That would be a bad desire. It would be an evil desire. Okay? So God will take, and we have to pray this. I've done this before many times for years. And then I would say probably in 2017 or 16, uh, the Lord came to me in a vision. During the time, I've had several times where I've done this, where I didn't sleep for 10 whole days. I didn't have to eat or drink, although I probably did. Like if I was around people, I think I ate or drank, just so I didn't appear weird. But the rest of the time, I really didn't do anything like that. I mean, I was just like more in heaven than on the earth. And Jesus came to me, and he took out my mind, and he stuck in his. He literally opened mine out, up, took it out. He ripped his head open, pulled it out, and stuck it in me. He ripped his chest open. He ripped my chest open and pulled out my heart. I think he did that first, actually. He ripped mine open, pulled my, and my heart was like the size of my fist, and it was black, and it was shrunken, and it was just disgusting. He 
pulled it out and threw it away. I don't know where he put it. I don't care. I just know it went away. And then he opened up his own chest and he ripped out his own heart and put it in me. Okay. He gave me his heart. He gave me his mind. Another time before that, I had a vision where, and this is what, this is what communing with the Lord will do. I was sitting in the Lord's lap and he said, let me show you. Because I had complained to him about, I had done so much counseling with people, especially marriages. And I was like, if one more person tells me they accidentally cheated on their spouse, I just want to slap them. And the Lord knew I was getting impatient. You know, we're not, love is patient. Come on. And I was being very impatient. I was like, what's wrong with these people? Oh, okay. I, I mean, I was on my knees in intercession of what is wrong with these people? Okay, and that's not godly. That's not how you pray, you know. So anyway, I was like, Lord, help me. And so he uh, let me see the world through his eyes. I was sitting in his lap and he said, let me show you something. And I sank into his body and we became one. And my eyes be became in his eyes. My nose, his nose, my mouth, his mouth, all that, okay? And so I'm looking out of his eyes and he shows me the whole entire world. And he says, those people that you're upset with who are committing adultery, they are ignorant and they are like a two to four year old child. And I was like, no way. What? What? He's like, they're just following the carnal desires of the flesh. Maybe some of them have been told they're not supposed to do that. I see uh, Johnny Ova on here. Y'all need to follow his ministry. Awesome man of God. Um, and so I was like, Lord, how can you say that? Like they don't know what they're doing. But he says, no, they're ignorant. They're following the carnal desires of the flesh. And maybe some of them were told, well, there's this thing called the Bible or these expectations of Christian people or the older generation says you're not supposed to be doing that. But they really didn't have a concept of knowing the Lord and knowing or being convicted by the Holy Spirit, by Holy Spirit, that he was wrong. So he says, they're like two to four year old little children. And then he began to show me other age groups and their maturity levels and such. And I was like, so I, I want to encourage you right now. We're just going to say this together. Lord, give me your heart for people. Repeat this after me. Let me love others the way you love them. Lord, give me your eyes. Let me see others the way you see them. Lord, give me your mouth. Let me speak your fiery words of love, in love, to others. Oof. Give me your mind so that I think like you about others, about me, about you, so I know who you are, so I know who I am, and even who others are. Lord, give me your hands so that everything I do pleases you. I see somebody right now, you're having a vision and you're seeing yourself plowing plowing in a field. You're literally out in a field. Um, another person, it's like you're, you've got a team of horses and you've got the, um, they're going in front of you and you're holding the reins of these horses. <clears throat> May the Lord prosper your work. And these two people I saw, they're women. You're women. The Lord is doing great things with women right now. Very wonderful things. He's such a loving God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. First John 4, 7 says, Love one another, for love comes from God. Remember, God is love. So the only way to love others is to love them how? From God, from his perspective, in his way. That's agape love. We talked about the four different types of love, the words that are mentioned in the Greek, how they had a word for each different kind of thing. They had the sexual love, 
They had the love of a friend, brother, or sister, um, they and family members. They had the love for the um, the love of God, and then they had the love for objects and things. And they used a different word for those. We're to love people with the love of God. Because if you try human love to love them, it's going to fail you every single time. You're going to get disappointed. And you're going to fall into hate. And we have enough of that as it is. Even loving people with the love of God. First John 4 and 8 says, Whoever does not love does not know God because God is love. If you're not loving others, and that's a word for me, that's a word for you. If we are not loving other people, then we don't know who God is. When Jesus was with his disciples and they said, because he went through Samaria and at that time, that particular time, Samaria just kind of blew him off and they didn't receive him. And so his disciples, they probably did more than just blow him off, okay? His disciples were like so enraged by the way Jesus was treated. He said, Lord, do you want us to call fire down from heaven? See, they recognized their mouth had power. They recognized they could transform their environment. They knew that if they spoke, they could pull fire down from heaven. Demons would back up from them. They had all authority under heaven and earth. And Jesus basically uh, reprimanded them and said, Excuse me, you don't know what spirit you're of. If we're operating in maturity and the love of God, then I can't be word cursing people. I have to go to the Lord with it and say, this just happened. Well, how do you want me to respond with regards to this? What do you want me to say or do? And, oh, by the way, this made me feel X, Y, Z. And I didn't like it. It ticked me off. You know, confess your sin to the Lord, but then ask him, ultimately, I'm going to do what you tell me to do. What would you like me to do in this? Cause, or you're going to have to give me your heart and your love for this person because they are cheeky. They got some nerve. They, they're they messed up. And then the Lord, Holy Spirit, he'll remind you. Every time I try to complain about somebody else, he will remind me. Remember when you were a teenager? Remember when you were early 20s? Do you remember how you used to be, that thing that used to go on? And I'd be like, Maybe. Well, praise the Lord, I'm not still there. Well, get them out of it, Lord. Help them mature. Get them past that point because they're not nice to be around. They're hard, difficult. So help them not be that way, Lord, you know? So again, Jesus had to explain to them that if they're wanting to kill people, obviously that's not the heart of God. That's not the love of God. Okay? Um, let's see. First John four sixteen. This is very interesting. It says, "We know and rely on the love of God. We rely on the love God has for us." What does that mean? Well, in hard times, and it says God is love. In hard times, I have to tell myself, "Nope, God does love me." Satan, you're lying. Shut up. Nope. Tiffany, Tiffany. Straighten up right now, Tiffany. Come on. You know God loves you. You know that the circumstances are lying. This is not what God promised you. He's going to work it out. When I had the business, I would have a client. You know, I got a, suppose I had a car payment due that Friday. Okay. And, you know, one of my biggest clients, maybe they paid 125 to 150 bucks for me to clean their house that particular day for four or five hours, you know. And they would call me maybe... It was a Wednesday, and they called me, or maybe a Tuesday, and they said, oh, don't come tomorrow, or don't come Thursday. We're going to be out of town. Well, number one, I had to ask the Lord's strategies on that. Well, should I tell them, just leave me a check under the, you know, mat outside? Or, you know, uh, sometimes it would just be like, just come next week. We're not going to be there. Or we're already out of town. We can't leave you a check, um, et cetera, et cetera. And I'm like, oh. well, I didn't get in a panic. Because I had turned that business over to the Lord and I always knew and this is what always happened. I would have one client do that and then I'd have another client. I'm talking within 15 minutes of that client counseling. 15 to 30 minutes. I would have another one call me. I'm in a panic. Oh my gosh, Uncle so-and-so, he is going to be here. Like, by so-and-so, like tomorrow afternoon. Oh my gosh, do you, can you fit me in tomorrow? And I'm like, why yes, I sure can. I will be there. So one would cancel, and I'm thinking, I could have been like, my car payment, I'm going to lose my car. 
but I didn't do that. I said, no, this is God's business and he wants me to prosper and he made it and I'm doing everything he's told me to do. So if this person canceled, somebody's going to go there. Well, the money's going to come from somewhere. And then I literally, it happened every single time. Every time. I know one week I probably had two or three people do that and I went, oh, wow, $600 worth of bills do. Well, what on earth? And then I would have other people from their other time slots going, Tiffany, I'm so sorry. I would not do this to you. I know you like us all to be on our own day and our own time, but this emergency has come up and so and so is coming into town. Or we just had relatives here and it's crazy and I just can't wait till next week. Is there any way at all you can help me out? It would be that way every single time. So if something happens and you're seeing stuff like that, don't go into panic mode. Panic mode will shut the provision of heaven from being able to help you. Fear and panic does not move heaven. Faith does. And that is trusting in the Lord. That you are his possession. You are his beloved. He lavishes you with great things. Not just his love, but with possessions. Come on. With a place to stay. With um, come on, finances? You see, I learned also to be content in every situation I was in. When I had to shop at Goodwill, I didn't curse God and refuse to go in Goodwill. I've seen people like that go through a bad time, and they're like, I will never shop at Goodwill. I don't care if I'm naked. Well, you might be naked. You do what you got to do and put a smile on your face while doing it. So that Because why? That will pull you out of that faster. But if we get nasty and gnarly... That will keep us in a bad place, a place we don't want to be. Our attitude can hold us or free us from the chains of wherever we are domiciled. Amen, Brandy. Hey, Libby. Yes, yes. Kathy, I shop there too now sometimes too. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And see, this is the thing, if you will be satisfied with, because God had told me, you know, some of you are used to shopping, and I had been used to shopping in some, you know, I had been working with tens of thousands of dollars each month, okay? Well, after the divorce, I was no longer handling tens of thousands of dollars, okay? I was handling $200. And it's like, oh my gosh, what has just happened? Well, I moved into a place, and I had no nothing. I had a, well, I did have something. I had a bed, mattress, so a headboard, rails, a mattress, and a box spring, and I had a dresser and a mirror. I think that's all I had. But that's something. Some people don't even have that. So I had all of that, and I was like, wow, I have no lamps, I have no couch, I have no this, no that. Well, people started bringing stuff left and right. Beautiful, gorgeous possessions. They started bringing stuff. But then one day I was, again, I was driving down the road. And the Lord said, go to, and honestly, I can't remember if it was Goodville or Salvation Army. I kind of get those, you know, because I was shopping in that town at a bunch of different ones or something. But the Lord said, go to such and such. And it was after church. I just left, got in the car. Um, took me forever to get out of there. We had done multiple services. You know how that is. And you're just like, oh, I just want to leave. I want to go home. I'm exhausted. Just get me home, Lord. And he says, go buy the so-and-so store. And I'm like, what? And so I went in the store. And the lamps that you see that I have in the home here, not all of them, but a lot of them. I got um, one of the crystal lamps that I have that's made of crystal. I probably paid $8 for that. Other floor lamps, these giant tall floor lamps. I don't know if you can see these, like that one. And then I have another one, almost just like it. $3. Did you hear me? $3. $3. $3. So I walk out of there. I probably spent whatever I spent at that store. Plus, as soon as I left there, they had perfect lampshades on them too. I'm talking perfect. He said, go to the other one across town. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I barely have any gas money. But again, if God tells me to do something, is it my, am I supposed to tell him I can't obey you because I don't have gas money like he didn't know? And I'm like, well, basically this is going to bottom out my account. I mean, I could just tell. 
So I'm like, I don't know what you're doing, Lord, but okay, I'm going to obey. I guess money's coming in from somewhere. So I ran across town, went in that one, and got stuff as well. We're talking $1, $3, $5 for giant lamps. Gorgeous things that cost a lot of money. So I come out and I put them all over the place. People come over and it's like, my gosh. Wow. You must have spent hundreds of dollars on lamps. And I'm like, uh, no, I didn't. I'm, I probably spent $24 or $25. Bucks. I might have had $25 to my name. I mean, it was close to like nothingness. And I was in shock. I was crying and weeping. Other people were in shock. So when God wants to bless your socks off, he'll do it. What was going on in my life at that time? Some person was cursing me. Um, they were not pleased with me. They were coming against me publicly. Um, they kept saying, well, one of the things they were saying was that I was going to, I think they said I was going to die, that I was not going to prosper, that I was going to lose absolutely everything, that all these different word curses. And God took the opposite of what they spoke and prayed and did. And then after he filled that beautiful place with all of that stuff, because it's not like he gave me, he didn't tell me, God didn't show me his agenda beforehand and said, I'm going to give you all these possessions. When I get done and fill the place up, I want you to take all these pictures and post it. And this person is going to see that and be upset. That is not, I, it's like I further sing from my mind. So weeks go by and the Lord one day said, take photos of how beautiful I have blessed you and just thank me for it and throw it on Facebook. I'm not thinking. I just do what he says. Just do what God says, you know? And I hit post and there was a shockwave of, let's just say that individual hopefully fully repented, but I know at some on some level they did repent because everything that they had prayed and said, God did the exact opposite of. So, God will bless you in front of your enemies. And in truth, other people in the body of Christ are not supposed to be your enemy, right? We're supposed to love each other. But here is the thing of staying pure in your motives of why you do things. If you're doing it because God asked you to do it, then suppose nobody did but suppose somebody came to me and said you're just being ugly posting all that on facebook you're just being prideful and going look what i got nah, 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 nah. the things you said didn't come true well that wasn't it at all i wasn't even thinking on that god said take pictures post it it wasn't until the aftershock that i realized oh why god had me do it okay Well, Brandy said she went through something similar. You know, her uh, dad had spoke horrible things over her. But God blessed her. Wow. And he also, see, this is the thing right here. She says, set her in a position for her dad to watch God's glory over her life. Okay? That's essentially what God does. Um, people that, if they come against you, don't love you, things like that, God will at some point... God will show his glory through you, and they'll see it. And in that time, what happens? Well, they have different choices to make. They can repent. They can go, I was a stupid idiot. I'm sorry, Lord. Oops, what was I thinking? They can go, I hate you and ignore you, go away, or be worse. But we're saying they will just go away. Because when our ways please the Lord, that's what I always say anytime there's like a tax or something. You know, I always just say, Lord, you promised me that if my ways please you, you would make even my enemies be at peace with me. So it doesn't matter what the circumstances look like. If I keep saying that long enough, then that's the manifestation that's going to happen. Because if it happened financially, I have a paid for house in ministry and I proclaimed that. And believed God for the promise. He told me what the promise was. And so I began to decree and declare it, right? Are you decreeing and declaring your promise? Don't say it futuristically. At some point in the future, I'm going to get X, Y, Z. Well, that could mean after you're dead. Your kids might get it. You know, you need to start saying um, it now as though you're already walking in it. I have a paid for house in ministry. I have a business that is not in debt. Uh, my business is over the top with an overabundance of finances. You know, what are you saying? You know, you don't want to say at some point my business is going to get lots of money and we're going to be out of the red and we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna. That's futuristic. If you want it now, you need to say it now. 
with now words. Words are very important. And God loves you enough. The reason we got off on to talking on that is because God loves you enough to give you just that. And why would he do that? Because it brings glory to his name. I remember telling the Lord, I said, Lord, when he healed me of rheumatoid arthritis, I said, Lord, I want you to make your Christian people in the earth, your Christian people everywhere, the Christians who will believe and desire and go after you. Make us the healthiest on the planet to where we don't ever get sick. We don't ever have health issues. We don't ever have health problems. So that when people look at us, they go, what is different about you? What do you have that I don't have? Why? That brings glory to God. So I just bless you all right now with the love of God. It says in 1 John four sixteen again, God is love. We rely on the love God has for us. Whoever lives in that love lives in God and God in them. God is so good. He's so good. He's so good. He's so good. It's not too late if you want in the prayer class. We had an awesome time last night. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome time. So we had an awesome time in the Lord. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I, I really, I, I want to talk to... I feel like there's a people on here. You need to... You're angry. It's more than one person. You're angry. You are so ticked off. So ticked off at what you believe God has done, your situation, things in life, and it's a bitterness. And you need to repent of that. So if you want to take this time and say, Lord God, I repent right now for being angry at you. I choose today to pick the promise back up. I choose to run after you and that promise. It's you that I'm running after, but you did give me that promise and told me to believe you. And so I choose to believe you. I lay down this nasty attitude. I lay down this. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And the prayer class is just donation based. Um, sow a seed and I put you in there. Cheryl. Aren't you one of my students or whatever? Or haven't you donated to me? I tried to look to make sure I didn't leave anybody out. I looked in the Cash App, PayPal, Messenger. Um, I looked in the donor box. I looked everywhere I could for people's names. There was one person who said they gave, and I never could find the whatever. Um, I think I went ahead and put them in there. So, I don't know. But any of my students, you know, you just automatically get in there. Because it is a closed group, you have to either click the link to get in, and then I can approve you, or um, that kind of thing. Fiona, it is. It's on the replay. You can get it on the replay, too. There's four sessions. We've done one session last night. Plenty of time to catch up on that. We don't do another one till Thursday night, tomorrow night. Um... But Fiona, to my knowledge, you're already in there. A lot of you may already be in there. You just haven't accited the invite. Check your invites. I don't, I'm not sure where you would go on Facebook to do that, but I sent you invites. Um, I tried to send that. And if you're in the school, go back to your class, and there's a link in your class on how to get to the prayer class. And then I will approve you. I'll um, put you in there. All my students get in automatically. So... And anyone who's being mentored gets into the school automatically. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It's different than just the normal mentoring for the school. This is like extensive mentoring. Um, have at least five, if not, but no more than ten things that you want us to work on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. But y'all had asked me, and a lot of my staff and students, they're on their Christmas break right now until January, the week of January 5th. So if they didn't want to participate in the prayer class, they do not have to at all. Um, but if you are one of my students or staff members or you want to be and do that, um, 
you know, we definitely could use some moderators. I didn't have a dream thread for the prayer class because I thought that might get out of hand, especially with me telling um, my ladies and gentlemen that they could have time off. I didn't want them to feel like, oh, great. She just never stops. I didn't get a break. Now I'm off to this. Now some of you need that break. And then others are like, I got nothing to do during the holidays. I need to do something. I need to do something. Hey, Callie. Oh, I wish there was something I could do. Well, believe me, honey. If anybody wants to volunteer, we don't have the dream thread, but we can easily put one in there. If anybody wants to help moderate that, I need I need a good three people on that one. You know, at least one person who's working that several times a day or about three people that can check in on it. Because I can't be everywhere. Now, you don't have to tell me if that's you as far as the anger or anything like that. Oh, Lisa, thank you. I'm going to pin that right here. I'm going to pin the comment. That's the link right there. That is the link. Prophetess Lisa put that there. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Did somebody mention a lab? Oh, a prayer request. Oh, Kathy, what happened? A swollen section the size of a plum on her um, right leg. My work schedule doesn't allow me time to get her to a doctor. Pray for complete healing. Amen, 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 amen. Kathy, I don't know if you have time to bring her by here. Um, I don't live far from you. After work or something, bring her over. Um, <clears throat> or something like that. I don't even know if you can. Um, if that's too difficult or something, just let me know. Um, I could come to you. Um... I know I've got a lot of phone calls I have to do. Scheduling and getting my mentees or whatever on their schedule. Um, and us going through getting that scheduled for people. Um, but I've prayed for people's pets before. Oh, thank you, Corey. I have prayed for people's pets before. And they have recovered and things like that. We prayed for one across the room, and I just held my hand up and said something. Power shot out of my hand and hit that dog. That dog woke up out of a sound sleep on the couch. It didn't look around like, who's at me? What's at me? It, no, it literally went, saw me and went. And it jumped off the couch and jumped into its owner's lap on a different couch. So, um, anyway, and I've prayed for other animals before. There was a cat that had something inside of its body. I could tell it had a lump. It had something to do with the kidneys as well. Um, and I can just see inside their bodies or whatever. And so um, I began to pray. And we prayed. We all put our faith together. And that thing shrank and went away. And sure enough, the cat went from being grouchy and crazy to literally being okay. Because God told me as soon as I saw the cat. And they were like, it's, you know, its attitude has changed and different things. And he's put on some weight and this and that. What it was is he was in pain. You know, but it's not like he was running around going, ah, ah, you know, like cat or dog will when they're in intense pain. This was more like it was just internal. He kind of was dealing with it, but he was grouchy. It's not like he was limping around or anything, you know. So, um, but he got healed just from us praying. So, we can lay hands on people. We can lay hands on animals. God has put us here to transform our environment. That means creation. So I can tell my yard, I did this in South Carolina. I did it in Tennessee. In South Carolina, the yard man came when it was like 100 degrees. Up in the upper 90s, he's cutting my grass and he goes, I don't understand this. All of my clients, their yard looks like your neighbor's yard. The grass is super short and it's dead looking because we're in a drought. He said, yours is knee high and dark green. Why is this happening? I said, well, I pray and speak life over my yard. And he's like, but he saw the evidence of that. I wasn't out there fertilizing my yard. I wasn't out there raining on it and stuff like that and watering it. I just commanded the heavens to rain down on my yard. I commanded you to come up from the ground. I commanded my grass to be green and fruitful and multiply and be beautiful. My yard to fill in all the, you know, spots in my yard. I didn't have gaps and holes. And my b plants were blooming two and three times or one a plant that's only supposed to bloom one time a year. Sometimes they said it could bloom two times a year. It bloomed four times that year. Some of my bushes. Four times. That's unheard of. Wanda, we just speak right now over your eye that the swelling and the bruising go away right now in Jesus' name. He, speedy recovery. 
We say your eye is not swollen shut. We command swelling to shrink. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Jenny, I agree with that because they are a created being. Jenny said that um, it seems like animals can see in the spirit, and they can. Um, they recognize spiritual things. I don't know to what degree exactly, but I do know I've had animals bark when um, when people have either astral projected or if there has been um, demonic activity where something came into the house after my children or after myself, literally the dog went crazy and was trying to kill it. So on some level, and it wasn't there in the natural, so on some level they can pick up on those things. Wow. And see, your dog was seeing angels, looks like. Because you said there were orbs when y'all recorded you singing. Orbs were flying over your head when you were singing. Um, so that would be angelic activity. That's wild. I love that. Amen. You know, children can see angels as well. My daughter, um, well, one of mine is a very heavy seer or whatever. And so she, she was just always just saying nonchalant. Oh, by the way, Satan came into my room and was drawing pictures on the wall and was telling me all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, what did you say? Oh, I told him God was going to get him and none of that was going to happen. I said, well, praise God. Glad you said that, baby. Did he go away? Yep. Why did he go away? I told him to leave. He can't be in my room. I said, oh, praise God. Praise God. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> You just got to uh, go with it. But kids, they can see the supernatural, the spiritual things as well. They don't have a junior Holy Spirit. Amen. Supernatural favor um, and door to open for you to go on an interview. Amen. We agree with that right now in Jesus' name. Sherry, we're agreeing right now that that emergency surgery goes well for your son-in-law, in Jesus' name. Wow, Pam said she had a horse that would tilt her head and look straight up. And I always wondered if she was seeing something, but that's not normal. But that particular daughter of mine, you know, when she was super tiny, before she could even talk hardly, I would just go, because she would just stare at Steph and start smiling and pointing. And I was like, well, I know she's not touched in the head. I'm like, what are you seeing? And she really didn't know how to say anything because, you know, I was just like, what are, what is it that you're talking to? What is it you're looking at? And I would just kind of ask her a few questions. Is it a, um, a man? You know, is it a daddy? Is it a, is it a mommy? What is it? And she was like, it's a mommy. To her, that was a girl. You know what I'm saying? And, but it was flying up in the air. And she just kept saying, flying, flying. And I said, oh, well, that's an angel. Didn't know what else to tell her because I had peace. I could feel a presence of peace in the room. Um, so I just said, oh, well, that's an angel. I couldn't see. Normally, I can see the visions of other people. At that moment, I couldn't see what she was seeing, which is very unusual. But I just told her, I said, that's an angel. Amen. May all children have the mind of Christ. Amen, amen. Hey, Rachel. Wow. Let's see here. Amen, Michelle. Thank you for praying in agreement. Wow. One of your daughters told you about um, the devil coming into her room when she was sleeping. And she woke up and told him he must leave in Jesus' name. Oh, I love it. See, if we train our children upright, that's what happens. I believe that Adrian animals can see angels as well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to hop off of here. Oh, how sweet, 
sweet, your granddaughter Peter came to visit you yesterday and couldn't take your eyes off you. And you're smiling at her. Oh. Rico said, last night was so informative. That is so good. I'm glad. I'm trying to make it simple and not boring. Um... I wanted to jump straight into praise and to worship, but I thought I'd best give a foundation of the relationship and the love and that prayer is not just a list. It's okay to make a list, but it's not a list. It's communing with the Lord. It's spending time with Him and letting Him lead. Letting Him lead. So, well, I'm going to hop off of here. Um, so different people that I know, uh, there was a couple of people, three, I think three people I said to call me today. So I'm available. Give me a call and I will talk with you soon. See ya.